Welcome to Stan the Energy Man. Stan Osterman here, coming to you again, live from Kailua, Oahu, Hawaii, in the city and county of Honolulu. And uh, I'm going to kind of carry on a little bit from what we talked about last week with Kel Kelly Iakina. Um, kind of tends toward a little bit more of the economic side of um, energy. Uh, but I think you'll find it interesting because you know, as I, as I look at where things are trending and I, I look at companies, I look at a lot of companies and their technology and stuff, and you start asking yourself, how do I know that this technology is really solid and it's really going to take off? And, you know, is it going to, there's a thing called the valley of death when you start a new business and it's making that leap from you got a good idea and a good product and then getting it marketed and getting it through the, the manufacturing process and then getting it into the logistics system. And it, it's quite a challenge for a lot of companies. So a lot of companies that have good ideas, they just never seem to make it, especially nowadays in the energy energy world. Um, a lot of those companies that sound really good, they they stumble along the way for one reason or another. And um, as an example, one company that's been in the news a lot for the last year in the energy world, especially in the hydrogen energy world, is a company called Nikola Motors. And they started off to great fanfare. They were going to have uh, big 18-wheeler tractor trailers that pull all those cargo trailers across the U.S. and get 1,000 or 1,200 miles out of a, a fill-up of hydrogen. And, you know, it was really exciting. And they were going to be building the stations and the trucks. And um, and then they they did a demonstration. And and actually, their, their vehicle is capable of doing what it showed in the video except that they falsified the video. And the CEO that authorized that fake video to go out, um, he ended up getting fired from his own company and the company's stock fell and about 80 bucks a share almost overnight. Uh, but it's still a solid company and it's gonna be coming back, I, I feel. But um, just one mistake like that can really, really mess things up. So. So how do you really know? How do you how do you tell? And one of the ways that I've figured out you can tell is when the government either backs it up with money, um, with loans or grants and things like that, or if the government backs it up with policy. And to give you a, a local example here in Hawaii, oh, back about four years ago, the state of Hawaii set a really ambitious goal to take our electric grid and have it 100% renewable by 2045. And of course, along the way, there were certain percentages where the grid had to be, you know, more, more and more fossil free up until 2045 when all of our electricity is coming from renewable resources. Well, just that one policy statement set a whole lot of things into motion um, for a lot of different industries, a lot of different companies, including the Hawaiian Electric Company, and that's one of the indicators you know that, that something's really going to happen is when the government sets a policy. In California, um, they do hydrogen vehicles and hydrogen transportation, and they've really kind of led the charge as far, far back as when Arnold Schwarzenegger was governor. And they haven't taken their foot off the accelerator, as it were. Um, California, though, also not just policy-wise, they put a lot of money state money into building hydrogen stations and building the infrastructure because in in the energy game and the hydrogen game there's already so much money invested in infrastructure that it's really hard to get new things started because the people who've been in place for so long like the car companies and the gasoline companies all the oil companies they pretty much they they've got a monopoly on the market and it's hard for anybody new to break in, no matter how good that company is. So when the states um, or the federal government start to put a lot of money into grants or into subsidizing stations or tax credits um, or just fixing some policy things, that's one of the best indicators that that technology or that company is uh, is moving the right direction. And um, one of the things that we've noticed this legislative session in Hawaii are some of the bills that you really wouldn't think. I mean, if you saw this bill going through the legislature, most people would scratch their heads and go, why, why is this important? So let me talk a little bit about that bill. It's called House Bill 113. 
And it's a really short bill. And it's actually just amending an old law. And the old law it's amending is the law that says how you have to measure gasoline and how it has to be certified. And the state of Hawaii will inspect your gasoline pumps every year to make sure that they're actually giving a person a gallon of gas when they pay for a gallon of gas. And that it tabulates right when you say it costs $5 a gallon or $3 a gallon, that the price is right on the machine. So, you know, it looks like a pretty benign bill. And you're like, well, why, why would they be changing this bill right now? And the reason is because we're coming into a, a reality that electric cars and in, including fuel cell or hydrogen fuel cell electric cars are really getting ready to step into the, onto the stage. So why would it make a difference that you have to amend a bill about gasoline to say, hey, these other electric cars um, need to have some relief from this existing statute that's in law? And the reason is because hydrogen, unlike other liquid fuels, is a gas, a compressible gas. And for those of you that you know, do chemistry or physics, you know that liquids don't compress really well. Um, gases compress really well, but liquids don't. There's, there's not a whole lot of space you can compress liquids into without huge amounts of pressure. So for example, you know, when you do a belly flop in the pool, it, it really hurts because the water doesn't compress. It, it's pretty, it's almost like hitting a wall when you hit it. Or if you're, you know, if you do surfing like I do, and you eat it on a really big wave, by the time you fall six or eight or 10 feet, with the force of energy and the speed that you're doing, you can hit the water where you skim across it like a stone because the water doesn't compress, but gases do. So therefore, when you try and measure hydrogen out of a dispenser and put it into a car, you have a different set of physics problems because if you just keep pushing the gas into the car uh, under pressure, as the gas leaves the station tanks, it cools down and you can actually see frost building up on the valves as the, as the gas escapes from the tank, it, it chills it down. The same concept actually the air conditioning does. When, when you have a, a gas that's, that's up depressurizing, it'll actually cool down. On the other side of the nozzle, where it's going into the car and it's pushing all these molecules into the tank, it heats the tank up and then the gas wants to expand. So if you didn't have the correct measuring equipment and you didn't monitor the temperature of the car, you could never get the same amount of fuel or, or energy into the car because at different temperatures, the gas would have different volumes. And so the idea is as you're fueling a car with hydrogen, you have to keep the temperature pretty constant. And to do that, the station the new modern hydrogen stations under what they call J2601, the station actually talks to the car through an infrared information exchange right at the nozzle. So as you plug your hydrogen car into the gas station, the hydrogen going into the car is going in the nozzle, but there's a little infrared communication port in that nozzle that's talking to the car and saying, how hot's your tank? What's the pressure? How hot is it now? What's the pressure? And the, the idea is the station is supposed to keep that tank within a fairly narrow range of temperature so that every time you fill that car up, it gets the right amount of hydrogen, not, not, amount, not uh, like if it was a car that gets 10,000 PSI. If you didn't regulate the temperature, you could cram a whole bunch of really hot hydrogen into that tank. And then as the guy drives away with his car, you know, maybe an hour or two hours later and the tank cools down, he might, he might be down at 8,000 PSI and he hasn't lost any hydrogen. He hasn't, he hasn't used it in his car. It's just that as the tank cools back down to normal temperature, the, ga the amount of gas in the tank changes because it's cooling down by volume. So you have to kind of be, you have to be um, aware of that when you switch from liquid fuels to hydrogen as a gas. And people say, well, what about natural gas? Isn't it a gas also? And wouldn't it do the same thing? Well, natural gas does have similar properties. And the same bill that is being amended, or the same statute that's being amended by this bill, um, 
recognizes that if you have a, a natural gas or a propane vehicle, it sets limits for a propane that are that are similar to hydrogen, but hydrogen is turns into a liquid state at such a really low temperature, it stays in a gaseous form for so long that it's still way more sensitive than propane or natural gases to pressure and temperature. So this old law that allowed for vehicles to run on gasoline or diesel or natural gas had really tight margins on it for accuracy. And the reality is that if you're refueling with hydrogen, you have to open that mar that um, error rate just a little bit wider so that you can you can still get a pretty accurate reading from the from the station to the car and and not have to have so such expensive equipment like you wouldn't have to keep the temperature within like a half a degree or a quarter of a degree you could go a, a couple degrees up or down and it'll give you pretty much what you what you need but it's not as precise as natural gas or gasoline in a liquid form or a gaseous form so this ancient law that was written, you know, I don't know, probably in the 40s to make sure you got a good gallon of gas in your car and was probably updated for natural gas is now being updated for hydrogen. And if you don't understand what I just explained about hydrogen gas expanding, you would scratch your head and wonder why the legislature is, is even looking at a law like this. Even more surprisingly and more to the point of government gets it is that the man that helped craft the bill is one of the senators in our state Senate who has been listening to hydrogen companies and, and vehicle companies talking to him about hydrogen for so many years now that he, he gets it and he realizes that um, our local Toyota company who built their own station can't actually sell their hydrogen to anybody but the people that buy their Toyota cars or lease their Toyota cars because if you don't have relief from that old bill um, that lets you use the new system, it isn't quite as as tight as with natural gas on, on making sure everything's perfectly in balance, that they won't be able to stay in business and they won't be able to bring the cars in. And these cars are clean cars that don't have any pollution and don't burn fossil fuels and they're zero emissions. They're only water. Uh, the cars only produce water, heat, and electricity. That's it. So when the state legislature gets smart enough to look at these laws and say, hey, we got to change this law or that hydrogen, these guys bringing in the hydrogen vehicles are dead in the water. That's one of the key ways you know that things are really happening in the industry. Um, the other way you really know is when you start to see um, companies, big companies that aren't in the particular industry, again, I'll use hydrogen as an example because it's my favorite thing to talk about. Um, when you see a company like Cummins Diesel, a, a company that's been making diesel engines for heavy equipment and, and all kinds of applications for decades, suddenly goes and buys um, Hydrogenics, a company in Canada that makes fuel cells and has been making fuel cells for probably two or three decades. That's a real good indicator. And, and what we've seen across the board is we've seen a lot of big companies like um, Chrysler and Daimler Benz um, partner, partnering up with hydrogen companies. Um, companies like Shell Oil and Total Oil have entire divisions that are looking at hydrogen and, and and looking at companies they can acquire that have understandings of how to produce hydrogen, and make hydrogen. So that's another really good indicator of um, how you would find these companies and how how you'd know they're they're really on the right track in terms of um, their product or their their industry or their technology is at a, a point that it's getting ready to take a big move. So we'll take a break right here. And when we come back, I'll give you some more concrete examples of why hydrogen's on the move. We'll be back in 60 seconds.
Kinetic Energy Man back with you after the break here. And again, we're talking about how you know a technology or a business model is, is ready to take off. And um, in the hydrogen world, one of the first indicators that I got was that the company, the auto manufacturer, Toyota, who had just finished rolling out the Prius maybe 10 years before, against all odds and all the all the people in the industry said there's no way the prius is going to be hybrid vehicles they're just they're not going to make it it's it, you know why would you buy one of those when you could just get a regular car and be a little cheaper and then all of a sudden the prius took off and people were buying them like crazy and the rest of the the, the rest of the professionals didn't even see that trend well then toyota and other cars that car companies have been working on hydrogen fuel cell cars for many years. But Toyota um, not only rolled out the Mirai, um, which means the future in Japanese, they, they rolled it out and said, by the way, we own all these patents on this technology and we're letting anybody use the patents. We're not going to have any court cases infringing on our patents. Here they are and anybody can use them. So they were sending a signal to the governments and to a lot of other folks that, hey, we want this technology to succeed and we're gonna open up and not try and be greedy about making money off of technology that's been licensed to us. And we're gonna, we're gonna let everybody use it. And that really started kind of a role going with hydrogen uh, in, the, in the transportation marketplace. And several countries have stepped up. I mean, so again, the government and the private sector both play a role in, in rolling technologies out. Some of the things that have been happening internationally are um, the country of Australia and the European Union overall, particularly Germany and the European Union, have both set government policies um, to move to a hydrogen-based energy economy. Um, and they've set kind of like the same standards that Hawaii set for electricity by 2035 or 2040. Um, and I've actually heard the, um, the science advisor from Australia brief their country's policy, and they are indeed actually rolling it out. They're, they're making hydrogen with solar, and they're um, selling that hydrogen to Japan and Korea, because in Asia, um, hydrogen is taking off. And the European Union and, and some European countries like uh, Portugal and Spain are literally having hydrogen produced in North Africa and they are piping it or shipping it into Spain and Portugal to support their industries. Um, countries in, in the European Union are using North Sea wind and they're taking that excess electricity when they can't sell it and they're turning it into hydrogen and they're pushing that hydrogen in their gas pipelines all over the country to help generate electricity and also support transportation. You see transportation uh, trains being built to run hydrogen in Europe. Um, there's just, there's so many industries that are picking up and so many countries that by policy are supporting it. So Australia and the European Union are really strong. There's a, a serious market in Asia and I just got this, this email today, um, although Toyota is, has kind of made the big push, uh, and here in Hawaii in particular, um, there's a South Korean company called Hyundai. And, you know, they're probably not a household word as much as Toyota or Ford or GM or whatever. But I'm going to read this to you. As of October, Hyundai Motors has sold more than 10,000 hydrogen fuel cell powered Nexo SUVs in Korea, according to ministry data. The nation's leading car maker in South Korea accounted for 82% of global sales of hydrogen vehicles last year, selling 6,025 vehicles worldwide in just one year, with Toyota selling 1,064 vehicles worldwide and, and Honda selling 218 vehicles. Now, those are really small numbers for a car company. And that makes it even more impressive because you don't make the money until you got the volume in a, in a market like that. But Hyundai gets it, and they're not just selling the vehicles. They're selling the fuel cells that go in the vehicles to use in other industries like forklifts and all kinds of things. They're also developing, and I think it's, it's out now, 
um, large scale delivery trucks and, and tractor trailer like the um, like Nikola Motors is making and Toyota is making um, to do long haul transportation of freight. Um, they're developing the trucks and I think they're already, Hyundai's already leasing them. I don't think Toyota's leasing the big trucks yet, but they're certainly not far off from uh, hitting the roads. And you just see this trend, you see this picking up momentum and you, you see things happening. Um, other big companies that you kind of watch on the international stage that tell you things are happening are companies like Air Liquide and Air Gas um, that, are, that are making the infrastructure possible. They're already into manufacturing industrial gases, um, but when you see them all of a sudden start to build up one of their divisions in hydrogen that was used to be small, and now they're building they're building up those divisions to to be able to produce more um, uh, equipment to make hydrogen, uh, especially clean green hydrogen, which is uh, electrolysis. Um, you know they're getting serious and. Uh, I've mentioned this before on the show that in just the past year, there's, uh, I believe, four new liquid hydrogen plants being made uh, between Texas, um, somewhere in the Southwest, I think one in California, that's making, they're going to be making liquid hydrogen primarily for transportation and for forklifts. And those things, normally you make liquid hydrogen for one purpose only, and that was NASA for space travel, for rocket fuel, and for, um, for help, helping uh, produce electricity in space. And the interesting thing is those plants for, that supported NASA, there are only one or two, and they produce 20 tons a day. That's kind of the scale they work at. The plants that are being planned right now, all four of them are 30 tons a day. So they're more than doubling the number of plants, and they're doubling the or, um, a 33% bigger capacity on all the plants. Um, so that's another way you know things are happening. Another company that's one of my favorites is uh, Plug Power. Um, Plug Power, and uh, the, the longer history is, I've been watching Plug Power for probably 10 years. And when I first started talking to the company and, and their, their CEO has been on my show here at least three times, um, they, they were in the red. I mean, they lost money every single year up until about four years ago. They started getting close to breaking even. And then I think just after four years, about three years ago, they started making money. Not a whole lot. They were making money every year. And um, they kept making money as their, their industry grew. And then you'd see news where they were buying other companies and they were teaming up with other companies. And suddenly, um, they're, they're big business and, and in the stock market, they're doing really well. And that's another, again, on the business side, when you see the money happening, you know, it's, it's for real. So Plug Power used to brag that they had um, 10,000 uh, hydrogen fuel cell forklifts and pallet jacks, you know, running around in Amazon or Walmart uh, warehouses. They're up to over 30,000 now. They're partnering with aviation uh, companies to make hydrogen fuel cell aircraft. They're partnering with other big companies to provide fuel cells, to provide hydrogen for their equipment in their warehouses and also on the transportation side. And so that's again, another indicator that this is how you know the businesses are taking off. Um, in the aviation side, um, some of the stories that have come out just in the last couple months um, there's a small company uh, called Zero Avia. And for those of you who watch the show live here or see it in the next day or so, um, if you go to the Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum website, uh, I don't have it handy, but it's Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum. They're actually streaming a broadcast on Friday at 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So on the mainland, that would be somewhere a little later in the day. But here in Hawaii, it streams at 8 a.m. for a company called Zero Avia, who are making commuter sized airplanes and have already flown a hydrogen fuel cell airplane. I think it was about a 20 passenger airplane. Um, and they're very bullish on making that, that airplane uh, com commercially viable 
in the not too distant future, they're already getting certifications from the ICAO, which is International FAA, if you will. Um, and they're working hard on that. But Airbus came out with a very ambitious goal of by 2035, having three commercial airliners um, on the market. And these airliners go from uh, just relatively short range, 500 mile range turboprop type airplanes to almost space age looking, yeah, they are space age looking, blended body um, airplanes that uh, they look like um, the new stealth airplanes you see in the military. They, it's the wing and the body are blended together. It's not, we used to call a traditional airplane is a, a, a paper towel tube with wings on it. Well, these blended body airplanes look more like um, triangles. They look a little bit more like the, the B2 B, um, bomber, which is a flying wing concept. So um, Airbus is coming out with that by 2035 in production. They want to be in production by 2035. And Boeing followed suit saying they're also going to be pursuing hydrogen. In the shipping transportation side, Kawasaki is making ships that run on hydrogen. And even more important than that, they're making ships that run on hydrogen that carry liquid hydrogen. So even in the shipping world, um, you've really got a great piece of technology. Um, I wanna show, before we have to go, I wanna show a really quick uh, video because we here in Hawaii are kicking off um, something where the private sector is putting the money into it and the government sector is changing some of the laws and doing the policy stuff. So let's roll a video real quick. Aloha everyone. It's Saturday morning. We know what time that is. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy time. Aloha and welcome to Stan Energy Man. Stan Osterman here, as usual, coming to you from the great state of Hawaii, the beautiful community of Kailua, on the windward side of Oahu, our main island. And we're gonna talk about sustainability. European Union, Asia Pacific players, they're calling it green hydrogen. So I said, okay, that's it, green hydrogen. That's what we call the answer to what we've been looking for, how to solve global problems with a local solution. So that's a, that's a sneak preview of what Hydrogen Hawaii's stations are going to look like. And they're rolling. They want to start putting these stations out this year. So that's another indication. By the way, I just found the website. So it's Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum. And it's marketing at Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum, all one word, dot org. And that'll get you to their website. You can sign up for that um, Air Aviation Hydrogen uh, web webinar or uh, show. That'll do it for this week for Stan Energy Man. I want to thank you for joining me and we'll see you next week here right on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.